Welcome, this is 360 Sport. Another entertainment moment for you to enjoy um, what is going on in the world of sport. Like we do, we're definitely going to have um, the interview segment today where we'll be talking to someone about um, the just concluded AFCON. I'm sure the jubilation and the joy is still ongoing in Dhaka. That's the capital of Senegal. Senegal won it for the first time. And um, it's interesting to know that um, the coach that CC who lost um, the penalty some years ago, was in charge of the second goal. Not a good one for, for Egyptian, but definitely they, they actually did so well. Not a record. They have the record, but they didn't extend that record of that championship. And from there, from AFCON, we'll be looking at, um, in some days' time, we'll be having the 2022 um, Assets Bank Lagos City Marathon. This is after last year that was restricted because of um, COVID-19. And to um, analyze these two topics with me is um, Tunde Eludini, a very um, an a sport journalist who is one of um, the most popular sport journalists we have here in Nigeria. Tunde, it's good to have you on the show. Good to inform you. Yes, let's go straight to business, um, um, Tunde. Senegal was one of the favorites on, on book, and they won that, and Egypt was one of the favorites. They got to the final, they lost that. Tell us that moment surrounding the final um, and what we've learned from AFCON 2021 that just ended in Cameroon. All right, thank you very much. Um, like you rightly said, um, both Senegal and Egypt were, were potential winners of the Nations Cup, and... Uh, so f seeing both of them get into the final was not much of a surprise. Um, it was more of um, teams that knew what they wanted in Cameroon and went for it. I'm looking at Senegal. Yes, they didn't have it so bright when they started out. Um, they needed a, an extra time goal to be able to beat Zimbabwe by a lone goal. And the next two group games ended in Barry and Rose. Um, and there was a bit of doubt about how ready they were uh, after seeing them going all the way in 2019 and struggling in the early phases of, of um, AFCON 2021. But immediately after the group stages, it was like they picked up and everything that came their way uh, were being torn away. The, you know, they are called the Teranga Lions. So they showed that they are Lions and they, t they, they tore apart every other team that came their way. And so to the final, um, it was going to be a very uh, difficult one. Since we know the pedigree of Egypt, we know that um, 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 star for star, they could match each other. And knowing fully well that Egypt are the most successful team as far as AFCON tournament is concerned. So that was going to be a difficult one for, 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 for Senegal. And that was, was what played out. It had to go all through the 120 minutes uh, before Senegal finally leaked it through the penalty kicks. Um, I think they are worthy champions, deserve champions. Um, they worked hard for this, uh, especially after they got to the final in 2019 and they narrowly missed that. But this time around, uh, they got all the things they had to do right. And perhaps luck was on their side this, um, this particular year. And the celebration is ongoing, like you said, in Senegal and its environs. Now, let's also know in March, both of them will be uh, playing um, in the World Cup qualifier. Um, the last time you were on the show, I asked you whether our outing in um, AFCON against um, also the Ghanaian outing, both of us will be playing the playoff, whether it really means so much. You said that um, we should not take that into consideration. That means our losing in the round of 16 and Ghana coming out from the, um, from the group stage, that that would not really matter when it comes to the World Cup playoffs. Now, um, we have Egypt and Senegal going to play the World Cup playoffs. What, what should we be looking forward to two of them playing a match? Or we should consider the final they played or is something that would be a different ball game entirely? Well, um, what I can just tell you is that expect an explosive game. Uh, because right now, uh, if you look at... There's a footage about Salah after the game uh, while they were in the dressing room. He had to address the, the teammates. And one thing that he hammered upon is the need to take to have revenge. The revenge is on the mind of the Egyptians right now. Um, of course, they came so close to winning um, the title in, in Cameroon, but it slept away. And so the only chance they have now 
is to make it to the World Cup. And who says Seneca doesn't want to go to the World Cup? Yes, they've won the African Cup of Nations. They want to go back to the World Cup and also prove that they are not just local, they are not lo just local champions. They have what it takes to rub shoulders with the best teams in the world. So ordinarily, the, the, the game, when the, when the uh, fixture was announced, Egypt versus Senegal, everybody knew, knew that it was going to be a tough game. But it has been given an extra impetus, as in the fact that both teams met in the final, and of course, one team lost, makes that World Cup playoff going to be very much, much interesting. Um, I can't wait to see how it's going to look out in Cairo and also in Dakar. Either of the two teams can, it, it, the, the game can go either, either ways, but um, I don't think it's going to be anything simple. It's going to be very explosive, that I know. Before I go to my second question, and that has to do with um, the Super Eagles technical coup that just announced that in term basis that, um, that, um, that um, Austin Iguavon will be there in Mananike. What would you rather prefer? A World Cup ticket or the AFCON win, if I'm to ask you, <laughs> because um, if, if um, that, that's still technical, will you prefer the AFCON ticket or the World Cup ticket? No, when you say ticket, you mean AFCON as in winning the AFCON? Yeah, winning the AFCON, thank you very much. Winning the AFCON trophy, rather, the AFCON trophy or the World Cup ticket that means to qualify for the World Cup in Qatar. Um, sitting down there, who do you think, who do you rather prefer to have? Well, that's, that's a dicey one. Uh, I want to believe that the World Cup ticket, for me, um, maybe, because if you look at, it depends on which country you're talking about now. If it's for Nigeria, I, if you're I'm, talking I'm looking about... At, I'm looking at Senegal and Egypt. Okay, well, for, for Senegal and Egypt, I think um, they will want the two, but... Either one, it, it, I think they, they, they should be, I, because I'm not a Senegalese, I can only talk for Nigeria. <laughs> if, it was, if it was Nigeria, I think we would prefer the World Cup tickets to the Nations Cup, winning the Nations Cup. Be why? Because the Nations Cup, we've won in three times already. The next Nations Cup is coming up next year. So there's plenty of, the next World Cup is coming four years' time. So if you miss winning the World Cup, um, the uh, Nations Cup in 2022, who says you cannot win in? Um, in 18 months or thereabouts time in, 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 in Cordova. So, but for the World Cup, you have to wait for another four years uh, before you can even have a chance. So if you look at it on that basis, then I might want to put more premium on the World Cup. Uh, but like I said, for Senegal, for the fact that they've never won it before, I think they might want to pick this ahead of the Nations um, World Cup. But that's just the might. Uh, but even if you look at the gains, Talking about the financial games that come with qualifying for the World Cup, making it to the second round and all that, compared to what attains when you win the Nations Cup, then you can see the large difference. But I think for each country, it, it depends. It depends. Egypt will, can afford to, to lose the Nations Cup in order to go to the World Cup. Nigeria can afford to lose the Nations Cup to go to the World Cup. But I, I cannot say if that will be the same for Senegal, if they, would, they wouldn't mind losing the World um, Nations Cup. Um, to go to the World Cup. They've gone to the World Cup before, so maybe, and they've never won the Nations Cup before, so maybe this is actually their, uh, their primary target and they've gotten it. Yes, um, today, Eludini, we'll go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking at um, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, the new technical setup, and also, in a few days' time, we'll be having the 2022 um, Access Bank Lagos City Marathon. Don't go away, it's still 360 Sports. Yeah, welcome back. Um, Austin Iguavon being the new interim basis of the technical advisor of the Super Eagles and uh, NFF has also confirmed that it's no longer a rumor that Imana Munike will be joining him as assistant, still retaining Josia Bobo, Aloy Agu and Sally Su Yusuf. We still have, um, have um, Tunde Ludin in the house. Tunde, what do you make of this? Um, I think it was something that we anticipated, and as far as I'm concerned, I think right now, in the situation that we find ourselves, this is not a bad choice. This is a, a workable choice, because come to think of it, if you are bringing on a, 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 a brand new coach that doesn't have um, the, the knowledge 
working knowledge of Nigerian football. I think it, will, it could have been Susaida. Um, so sticking with Iguavon, yes, Iguavon has his own lap suit. So bringing in um, Amunike to co also compliment him, I think um, it's a good direction. It's a good um, decision by the NFF. The only thing I just hope is that these guys can um, work harmoniously and there won't be friction of who caused the final shot and all that. If they can be um, united as working as a team and knowing that it's about the team, it's not about the individual uh, glory, then I think it's, it's, it's a fair choice. Amunike has, has um, shown that is 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 um, how I say it. He's fast um, showing himself as a coach to reckon with, and so if we bring his expertise um, to complement what we've seen of Guavon, like we said, we saw the difference in the Super Eagles. Um, just how many um, how many weeks after Guavon took over? So, but like I said, it wasn't a perfect job. He still has his lapses. So bringing uh, Amonike to complement him. And the whole world also of Salis Yusuf, Yobo, and Aloha Ago, um, I think it's not a bad one. We should just hope that they can work together as a team and get us the results that we, we all uh, want, which is to be at the World Cup um, this year. People keep saying this, and as we echo before we go to the next um, topic, is we, we, we don't play fantastic on that Ghana trial, but we deliver as, I mean, if we don't have that excellent play, under him, or like what we saw in the three games under um, Austin and Guavon. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think people would rather prefer? Do you expect us for, what's your opinion on that statement? Yeah, of course, at the long run, you say result counts. How you get the result is, uh, is immaterial. But what it shows is that, is this same player that are getting the result that we're not playing well under, um, that we're not playing too well on that road? So if, it is this, if it's not a function of a government going to shop for new players and the new players in our board are now playing well. So that shows that these players can actually play well. So it is about getting the right mix. The Nigerian team we have can play well and get results. And so that's what we want from them going forward. Yes, the result is uh, primary. Does that mean Jenna Troy was, was doing it better? Was, was it doing it better? Or oh, there must be, does that Amigena try have an edge over them, even if the fact that he wasn't playing very well? I don't, I don't want to subscribe to the, to the how you've couched it that he was doing better. I think it was just being uh, pragmatic. If you look, one of the, one of the uh, complaints against the NHL is even when he calls for a friendly game and you invite as much as 25 players. Hardly will he use 14 out of them. He, he's so rigid, as in, if these are the guys that will give him the results, he doesn't try any other person. Or it's, 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 it's kind of complicated. Yes, he's a man, like a German that he is, he's very pragmatic. He goes for the result and he gets it. But like I said, it's like we're underutilizing our talents. If you start, look at um, Simon Moses before, he said he plays to the instruction. So if Roy just tell him, I don't want you to do more than this. This is strictly what I want to, you to do. Then it doesn't give room for expression. Players are not able to express themselves the way they want to. And sometimes the taxes might even make them um, look uh, below par. So, but if there's a coach that has given them room to express themselves, and of course, we had results in some of the games. And when we, and also, we were able to see the last shifts of, the, uh, of the Gabon, like I said, then we know that there are still some loopholes that we need to block. And that informs um, the um, second end of uh, Amunike to the team, which I said is a good um, development. So I won't want to subscribe to the fact, uh, to, the, to a blunt -hand fact that Roy has an edge. Okay. I think Roy could have been better if he had used the players that we, that we have optimally. Those guys were not, they were not used optimally. That's just my submission. I might be wrong. <laughs> I trust you. Uh, um, Cindy Elidin, with your experience, I don't think um, you are wrong, but it's a submission and it's well considered. Now, let's look at further question. We'll be having the 2022 um, Assets Bank Lagos City Marathon. And um, last year, COVID-19 restricted um, movement. But this year, it seems we'll be having what makes that marathon tick. Tell us a view of the observation and what we'll be expecting when we have the 2022 
Access Bank Lagos City Marathon? Okay, so for last year, it wasn't a, for, it wasn't a total restriction. Yes, um, it was at the take of um, the pandemic. So what happened was that we only had 300 elite runners running um, that particular year. Um, so the, the Lagos Marathon um, remains one of the uh, high-end marathons that have been able to weather the storm, as even regardless of, of the pandemic. So for this year, um, like you said, um, things are as good as back to normal, and we expect a full out this time around. The 10-kilometer run that was outrightly cancelled last year is back for this year. Um, so it's going to be a full house, like you rightly said, and we really expect the best. Um, the organizers have been able to um, get, uh, how do I say, get some of the best runners across the world to come and grace this year's uh, um, event. And so every other year, we are expecting new records at the Lagos Marathon, and I think this year will not be an exception. Yes. Um... The question on the lips of everybody is, has Nigeria prepared enough to upstage um, the Kenyans and Ethiopians? And, uh, because it's seven years in the run, the seventh edition of this uh, marathon. Will a time like that ever come? You've been speaking with so many of them, you know them, that have been doing so well. But will, they, it's, will it be this year or we still have a long way to go since we are now having the culture of um, long distance ways? But is it the time to upstate the Kenyans and the Ethiopians? Okay, so um, one thing this uh, marathon has done for the local guys is that it has given them a platform to rub shoulders with the best in the world. Ordinarily, most of them will have not been able to travel out um, to, say, maybe Boston or Paris or wherever, where the top marathons are happening. Uh, but this race has been brought to their doorstep. And so one thing I must first commend the local, um, the local athletes, what they've been able to do is each other year, they've been narrowing the gap. Um, I think um, last year or thereabouts, one of them actually broke into the top 10. And that is a good, um, that's a good step in the right direction. So for this year, I've, like you said, I've spoken to most of the um, top guys on the, on the home front and um, they, 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 they sound so optimistic. Most of them were not around last year uh, because the timing of the marathon coincided with um, the National Sports Festival. So we had a handful of them missing out last year. And so they are back fresh uh, for the 2020 race. And one thing, again, that has one good indication I've seen is that most of them were able to arrive in Lagos. We have a couple of them that have arrived in Lagos as far as last week. Um, trying to acclimatize themselves to, um, to, to the Lagos weather and the course itself. Uh, what we have in previous year is them coming like um, three days, two days before the race, and that affects their overall performance. But this time around, they've been around for upwards of a week <clears throat> in town. And so I think all these, if you put it together, and the experience and the exposure they've gotten down the years. Yes, I'm not predicting that they will win the marathon, but at least I hope to see one or two of them within the top ten. Um, at the end of the race. Yes, um, thank you very much. Before I let you go, one question, um, Tunde. From your own opinion, I think that that should be um, a question for the medicals. And um, th does this signify the end of the pandemic? Because we are going to have over 100,000 Nigerians gather at the same place. And um, it seems that um, the protocols will be observed. But this will be the largest gathering of any um, social function in Nigeria. No. What's your opinion okay. on that? Okay, so um, the organizers are still very much aware that, yes, you may have found a way around um, the pandemic, but that doesn't mean we should throw caution to the, to the wind. Um, yes, we, we, do, we are not going to, the registration has been uh, managed, unlike previous years that it is left for as many people that want to, to apply. This year's registration nonetheless have been managed. So you, won't, you might not see the, uh, in, uh, the mammoth crowd that, you, we, that the marathon is associated with. And beyond that, um, strict compliance to, um, to, to the COVID guidelines uh, is a must. When the guys that have been past fit to, to run, those that, that, that have been given their kids to run, um, they've been told all that is required of them. So. Uh, nobody is taking chances. Nobody is um, um, throwing caution to the wind. We still know that 
yes, we have to be responsible citizens. So um, all these things are being put in place um, for this year's race. It is not just um, believing that it is all over and so we can do anyhow we like. No, that's not the case. Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, viewers out there, if you are watching, not definitely that um, the COVID-19 protocols um, will still be observed. Thank you very much, um, Tunde Ludini, for being part of this show. Thank you very much for having me once more. Yes, um, this is all we could take on to this program. I'm sure those of you that um, are willing to be part of it, that's um, the 2022 Assets Bank Lagos City Mahada. Don't forget that uh, you need to keep to the COVID-19 um, protocol. And this is all we could take on to this program. Like I say, every day, we enjoy yourself. And make sure you run and get LD ahead of the 2022 Assets Bank Lagos City Marathon. Bye for now.